Now, that's why you have to be careful what we say. Here's some statements that I found very important to remind you of and how important it is for you to say the right thing right now. Power of words. Number one, Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who love to use their tongue incorrectly, they will eat its fruit. Death and life is where? Power of tongue. In other words, death and life is not in the environment. It's not in the circumstance. It's not in even the event. It's not in the crisis. It's in what you say about this situation. Oh, Lord, we ain't going to make it. Lord, what am I going to do now? Lord, ain't nothing going to help me now. Lord, everything's falling apart. Oh, my God, how am I going to make it to the end of the month? Oh, Lord, my house don't go. Oh, and you keep talking. Now, notice it says, you shall eat the fruit of that. It's amazing that when God created the heavens and the earth, you know, God makes everything beautiful. And if you were to read verse 2 of the Bible, Genesis 1, it says, and then the, suddenly the earth was out form and void and dark. So something went wrong with God's creation. It is believed that in verse 2 of the Bible, that's when Satan was kicked out of heaven and he brought confusion to the planet. But if you read verse 3, God was, the Bible says, the Lord looked at the darkness. Now, you know, whatever God says comes to pass. God refused to say, who is dark? Because if he had said what he saw, can I say it again? If he had said what he saw, he would have had what he said. I don't know how it and the God was not denying the reality of darkness. He preferred to say what he preferred. Oh, I'm going to say amen to myself. I'm going to say it again. God didn't deny the reality of the darkness. He refused to confess, to speak what he saw. He preferred to speak what he preferred. And he got what he preferred. He said, light be, and light was. And so you got to be careful with your words. Number two, Proverbs 11 verse 9 says, with, this, with his mouth, the godless destroys his neighbor. I mean, you keep going around. Boy, everybody getting laid off. You better be careful. You ain't going to make it. It's just going to be rough on all of us. Boy, we ain't going to survive this. You're going to lose your house, your car, the dog, and the CD player. You know something, man? You're going to get sick. You're going to margin fall apart, man. And, they, and you got this, this neighbor destroying you by their words. This is the time to stay away from negative people. Because they got a lot of material now. They ain't got to manufacture no material. They got it. It's coming every day on a platter. And they want to serve it to you. Tell your neighbor, you're going to come out of this in shining colors. Tell your neighbor, everything going to drop off you like water on a duck's back. Come on, say it. Tell your neighbor, you're going to be completely insulated from this crisis. So don't panic. Make some plans. Tell your neighbor, there's life after a test. So I'll see you on the other side of the test. Give God a hand for positive neighbors, you see? That's what we need. But true knowledge, the righteous escape. Look at the next statement. With his mouth, the godless destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge, everybody say knowledge. Knowledge means there's something you know that your neighbor don't know. So don't listen to what your neighbors say. Tell them what you know. Remember we spoke to this in our last session on Sunday. Jesus said, I will give you secrets. The secrets of the kingdom will be given to you. That means you got some knowledge that the known people don't have. He says, now you speak the knowledge, not what you see, but what you know. What you see is there, but you speak what you know. This cannot destroy me. I am tougher than this. I am made of steel in the kingdom. Nothing formed against me shall prosper. I am victorious. My Savior overcome the world, therefore I do will overcome this. You have to speak what you know, not what you see, because what you see, uh, if you speak what you see, you'll get more of what you see. 
Yeah, yeah. Look, you know, the Bible speaks some very contradictory statements like this. Let the weak say. He said, let the weak feel strong. Let the weak say what? I am strong. The Bible said, let the poor say what? I am rich. So you're not denying that you ain't, you ain't got the money, you know, but you ain't got to say it. You're going to say, I'm rich. Why? I am temporarily broke. Give God a praise for temporary conditions, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. So the victory is in the mouth, not in the eyes. There's another verse I thought was important to remember. Proverbs 11, verse 11. It says, this is very important for the country now. Every country. Through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is destroyed. You ain't never seen that verse before. God says, look, the country will become whatever who's speaking the loudest say. You can destroy a city with your mouth. Look at that verse. So that means we need people in public, whether it's politics, in ministry, in business, in education, in employment. We need people who can say things that we want to see become, not what we see with our eyes. You can destroy a whole city with your mouth. So the wicked say things like, we ain't gonna come, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna recover from this. Mm -mm, half of the country go into hell in the basket. You know, you might as well just, you know, get ready to check out, do you, you know, and they start all these predictions and predictions and predictions. You know, uh, <laughs> do you realize that you ain't gotta say everything you see? The bird in Hawaii, real bad. Yeah. Thing not. You can destroy an entire country, it says, with your mouth. So the righteous do what? They bless the city. The Bahamas is where God lives, so we are insulated. Praise God. A thousand will fall at our right hand, whatever country that is. Another thousand, ten thousand left, whatever country that is. But it won't come near our country. You better set up your own country. Right. The power of negative announcements. The power of negative proclamations by a leader in a country can destroy the country. This is why leaders who are true leaders, uh, they will never sell discouragement. They don't distribute depression. They always speak with hope. Hope. Because hope gives the whole country hope when you speak hope. Because God is a God of hope, the Bible says. Say, say.